Hello, and we are live on YouTube. Good morning, everybody. This is exciting because I have been on a rampage to try to figure out the best audio systems for me. And if you, like me, are interested in getting great audio, there's a lot of options out there, and it's hard to know which one to go to. So I've been experimenting with a lot of different lav mics. I've been experimenting with USB mics as well as shotgun mics. And as you can see on my desk, I've got a lot of gear going on here. And I've also tried using my old arsenal of dynamic microphones and we'll take a listen to each one of those different systems. And right now you are just listening to my Smart Lav Plus, which is clipped onto my shirt. I'm not sure if you can see that, it's just right over here. And why would you wanna use each, right? Like, so, Lavalier microphones are great because whether your person moves around or whatever, you're still gonna get decent audio because it's clipped to them. The uh, Smart, Smart Lab Plus is, I believe it's about $80 or so, or $70 in the US. So it's actually a pretty good value for what it gives you and it does sound pretty great. But one note for, for lavaliers is you wanna make sure that your positioning is right for the person's voice that you're wanting to microphone, okay? So I have a pretty high-pitched voice, not a lot of bass. The Smart Lab Plus does have a good bass and mid response, but um, I do like it facing up toward my mouth to get more of the high frequency range. And so you'll notice that this clip here is just clipped with it aiming upwards. I do notice that this microphone has a little bit of noise, so if I move my shirt, you'll hear a little bit of noise rubbing against the windscreen. Now the good thing about the Rode Smart Lav Plus is that there are a lot of accessories available for it, third party and as well that they make themselves. There's ones where you can literally shove the little capsule into this little rubber or silicone holder and tape it right to your body hiding it. But again, you're gonna to have to experiment with the positioning because if you're gonna put it under a shirt, then you're gonna lose some high frequency sounds, of course. So really make sure that you do listen with a good pair of headphones and see what kind of quality you wanna get out of it. Now, the pro of the Smart Lav Plus, and this is how I have it plugged in, I just have my Smart Lav Plus, let's switch to the other microphone here. Um, can you see this? Oh, no, you can't. Let me just get rid of my top screen here so you can see what I'm doing here. So I've got my Smart Lav Plus plugged into the adapter that I also had to purchase from Rode. And what this does is converts the tip ring, ring sleeve into a regular microphone input. Then I have it going into a very inexpensive USB audio converter here. And that's how I'm getting the audio into my computer right now, all right? So it's not gonna be expensive. This audio converter is about $10. And then the, this adapter cable, I believe, isn't inexpensive, but it is necessary to get your Smart Lab Plus into your computer if you wanna use it for live streaming, all right? Or into your camera as well. Let me switch over to the USB mic so that I can show you exactly how this is set up. So we're gonna switch over and turn off the Smart Lab Plus. And now you're listening to my USB mic. And that is this Samson G-Track. And it has a large diaphragm as far as the microphone capsule is concerned. Really nice. Um, but again, now if I move away from the microphone, it's gonna decrease the bass response as well as the overall volume, okay? So that's gonna be the negative to that. But let's go back to this Turtle Beach here and how I have it connected is quite simple here. So if I unplug it, this is what they call a tip ring sleeve sleeve, a uh, tip ring ring sleeve, sorry. So you've got all these different bands on the wire here and that means it's not gonna work on a camera or your computer unless you buy this cable. And Rode was really smart to color code everything. If it is gray, then you're gonna notice that it's gonna be a tip ring ring sleeve. And then if it's black, this tip is black, you're gonna notice that this is just a tip ring sleeve. So it only has two of those black bands versus the three on this gray cable here. So if I plug this in, that's gonna allow me to plug it into any camera that has a microphone input and also things like this USB to audio converter. So I can plug it into the microphone input right there. Now, 
I'm going to switch back to the Smart Lav Plus so you can hear that. Now we're back on the Smart Lav Plus that is just clipped to my shirt here. So the other thing that I should note is that I'm running this all through OBS software, so the audio sync might change depending on what microphone I've got plugged in and am running. So my apologies if I look like a bad Chinese movie and my lips are not sunk, but hopefully you can listen to the audio and make a judgment for yourself which one you prefer. I'm actually rather impressed with the Smart Lav Plus with the general noise floor is quite low and its intelligibility is very good. There is some noise, of course, in the cable movement, but it's actually a really good sounding microphone. And because you could plug it into your smartphone, that makes it even more versatile. So if you've got an iPhone or an Android with a microphone input, then you're still in luck with this boy. You can just plug it in and start going live stream or record audio at will. Okay, now let's talk about the USB mic and why you might go for that. I'm gonna switch back to the USB mic. And now we're back on the USB mic. Generally speaking, you can get a great sounding USB mic for under $100. I think this one is about $80 right now, and I love it. And why did I go for the Samsung G-Track over, let's say, more popular models like the Snowball or the Yeti? I One, I'm a musician first, and I love the fact that this one has an instrument input. So if you wanted to plug in a guitar, you could. And if you look at the front of this thing, you've got input controls for a instrument level as well. You've also got a live headphone monitor so that I can plug headphones directly into this microphone so there's no delay in what I hear from what I'm saying and so I can monitor myself. If you're wanting to track vocals for voiceovers or even sing, that's actually really useful so that you don't have this weird delay that you hear when you're actually trying to record to your computer. Now, the USB mics, I you're gonna notice a lot of difference depending on how close you are to the microphone. So the closer you get, the better the bass response and the better the mid-range response that you're gonna get. So I used to tell people when I was doing audio recordings to eat the microphone, and that's because you're gonna get a way better intelligibility when you get up close to the microphone. The problem that poses is the fact that you're gonna get some noise if they blow into the microphone. And that's why I recommend getting a windscreen. And the windscreen that I use is the WinTech PopGuard. Oh yes, all the links of course are on the, in the description, so go and knock yourself out over there as well. Um, but the reason why this is important is because if you were to blow or even talk directly into the microphone without this, it's gonna be quite noisy whenever you say p -p or when you have the S's as well are quite sibilant. So that controls that very nicely. But I really do like the USB mic, but the problem is you've got to have whoever's talking into it right in front of the microphone for it to sound its best, all right? So that's gonna limit your positioning as well as limit your movement, okay? So not ideal for all situations, but if you're just doing a podcast and you can sit in front of a microphone and talk at your camera, then this is gonna be a great option to get into. Okay, the other thing I should note is that I do recommend a shock mount because even if you're to tap your table, you're gonna find that you're gonna hear every little movement even though your microphone is up here and you're tapping the table way down here. The, the reason that is is that all the vibrations are traveling up the microphone stand and getting into your microphone capsule. And what shock mounts do is it makes the whole entire microphone float with these little elastics. And so it gives you a lot more freedom to move around and touch stuff without worrying about your audio being compromised. So that's really nice. Now, let's go back and compare this to the Smart Lab Plus again. So I'm gonna turn the Smart Lab Plus on and the USB mic is off. So it is gonna give you a very different sound. The USB mic is very quiet. The Samsung G-Track, I love this audio quality, especially when you can go really up close to it as well. But again, remember, you have to stay close to it or else your audio will change in tonality because you're gonna lose your bass and your mid-range and you're gonna lose the volume when you move away from your mic. Let's talk about the third type of microphone and that is a shotgun mic. And there's a whole bunch of different options out there now and more recently like Rode has several NT versions of their shotgun mics and more recently Aperture is a great brand that you can check out and I do recommend as well but I happen to have an old AKG 568 shotgun mic sitting around because I used to record um, bands as well as choirs and that is just a beautiful neutral sounding microphone and I'm going to show you how I've placed that and right now let's switch over to the overhead cam 
And let me show you way up over here. Okay. You'll notice that again, I've got a shock mount and that's a road shock mount, shock mount because they're kind of universal. And this thing just floats right inside of it. All right. And this shotgun mic is literally touchable. Like you can see me in the little corner there and I can touch it without having to extend my arm fully. Okay. And it's the, Capsule is aimed directly at my mouth, okay? So just out of camera and directly at my mouth. And this is what it sounds like. I'm gonna turn off my Smart Left Plus. And now you're listening to the shotgun mic. And what I need for the shotgun mic, because most shotgun mics are going to need what they call phantom power, all right? So you can't just plug this into your camera, and unfortunately you can't plug it into your computer without some kind of audio interface. And if you're gonna be into video making, I would highly recommend um, getting something like the Zoom H5 that I have. So I'm gonna turn on my overhead camera here so you can kind of see what I've got going on here. So from the shotgun mic, I've got a microphone cable going into the Zoom H5, into the left side right here, number one, it says on this little thing. Now, this is right now set to about level six on my audio meter here. And really, I should probably put my headphones on so I don't blow out your brains with the volume. But the shotgun mics are nice because even if I do move away, so I can actually move back and unlike the USB mic, if I just move backwards, it should actually not change the volume too much. Now, side to side, there will be some change because shotgun mics typically only want to listen to audio from in front of them and a little bit behind them, but it should reject a lot of the side sounds as well, okay? So that's why shotgun mics are great. And this is actually kind of a beautiful thing because I don't have to worry about A, wires on my Smart Left Plus, and B, moving away from a USB mic like this. So again, you are listening to the shotgun mic alone right now. Now, I'm gonna to switch to the USB mic, and you're gonna notice probably that the noise, noise floor is lower. There's less room by um, acoustics because this is just a room with normal four walls. There's no acoustic treatment in here, although there are curtains on the wall. But realistically, this is going to be what a normal room sounds like, okay? Because I'm so close to the USB mic, it's going to sound better, all right? Because you're not going to get that room noise. Now, if I could switch to my Turtle, um, the, my uh, Smart Lab Plus, sorry. You're going to get a little bit of room noise, but not as much as the shotgun mic, all right? So let's go from the SmartLav Plus, and now I'm going to switch it to the Zoom um, H5 with the shotgun So here is the shotgun mic again. And so all of them have like very good sound, but a little bit different, all right? And it depends on what your needs are. If you need to have your talent uh, give them freedom, then the shotgun mic is actually a pretty good deal. You don't have to worry about them rustling their shirt and making a lot of noise on a lapel mic. You won't have to worry about them having to eat the mic on a USB mic. And you can just let them sit there and not feel quite as conscientious if they're really nervous and worried about microphones um, close to them. Uh, right now, also, I'm gonna show you a couple of different versions of dynamic microphones that you can hear the difference. And really, you don't need an expensive mic to make it sound really good. It's gonna be depending on your positioning. So shotgun mics, I do recommend just above. Then you can aim it down toward the face. And then you can also make sure that um, it's within touching distance. The closer it is to the person's mouth, the better the audio quality is going to be. Let's switch back to the... Smart Left Plus. Again, we're back to the Smart Left Plus, and now we're gonna have some fun. I'm just gonna plug in my Shure SM57, and this is an old standard uh, microphone, couple hundred bucks, um, and it's not phantom powered, it's a dynamic microphone. So, not the most expensive, but they're built like tanks. Like, um, I've dropped many of these on stages, and they have survived the wrath of Dave. And the other thing you can, these, can survive very loud volume levels without dying. And so a lot of people use these for miking snare drums, hi-hats. And so here's the trick with 
SM57s or any microphone, you can make them sound great and maximize their qualities by making sure the positioning is proper. Depend like whether you're recording an instrument or a vocal, it's going to matter where you put the microphone. So I'm just going to put on my headphones so I can listen to what you're listening so I don't blow your head your 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 eardrums. So right now, let's check one two. Here we go. All right. I'm going to turn off the smart level and now you're listening to the Shure SM57, this microphone right here, and it's going into the second input of the Zoom H5. If you take a look at the meters here, you'll notice that I like to keep the levels between minus 12 and minus 6 maximum. And that's going to make sure that I don't distort or blow out the um, volume, okay, and clip the audio signals because digital clipping is not very forgiving and the reason why I need to hear with headphones is I want to make sure that I'm not yelling with plosives and a lot of wind noise so take a listen to this and you'll notice that when I move my hand there's quite a bit of handling noise okay but actually I've got another microphone here which is a condenser microphone and this one even has more handling noise and different microphones their design as well as how they've suspended the mic capsule will be different amounts of handling noise but the SM57 is actually quite decent for handling noise but you'll notice that the sibilants the S's are quite pronounced on this one and you might need to listen to a good pair of headphones to hear the difference between all the different microphones but if I move away from my microphone, then you'll notice that the bass drops off quite a bit, even though the high frequencies are still there. Okay. Now, if I go close up again, that's going to be the really nice bass and mid range without clipping as well. But again, I'm kind of literally two finger distances away from my mouth and aimed at the corner of my lips here. And if I put it in front of my mouth, you'll notice a lot of plosives. So now I'm talking to you in front of, and this is a common mistake, people always kind of hold the mic right in front of their mouth, and you're going to hear a lot of that wind noise, sorry to annoy you, but if you just moved it to the corner of your mouth, so that when you blow, the wind goes forward and not into your microphone, it's going to help a lot in reducing all those unwanted noises, and the intelligibility is going to be excellent, because I can keep the microphone really close to my mouth, and yet get the good bass response, mid-range response, and also avoid those the wind sound, the plosives and the S's, all right? Now, this is just showing you how good a regular microphone can sound depending on where you place the microphone. If you are like most people and they just hold the microphone this far away, then the audio quality drops significantly. So that's not the best option and why I would recommend a lapel mic for a lot of people who don't want to or know how to hold a microphone properly. So placement, again, makes a huge, huge difference. I'm going to switch back to the SmartLav Plus. And now again, you are listening to the SmartLav Plus. And once for more for good measure, you no matter what microphone you use, you want to make sure that the placement is going to be proper for the sound that you want. So if somebody's really got a high-pitched voice, you might want it closer to their chest and away from their lips so that you can em emphasize those bass responses. If somebody's got a really low rumbling voice, you might want to do the opposite. You want to make it lower, you know, a little bit closer um, to their mouth aimed at and um, you want to make sure that it's not covered by their shirt or anything so that you don't impede the high frequency sounds from getting into the microphone. Likewise, for a USB mic, you want to make sure that the person is getting as close as possible to that microphone. But if they're really boomy sounding, like you've probably heard those radio stations where it's just too much bass, like they've EQ'd it wrong, then tell them just to move a little bit further away and that should take care of that as well. So let's listen to the USB mic. And here is the USB mic, and the USB mic sounds great, especially when you get really close to the capsule here. So make sure that you position the microphone very close to the person's mouth when you're talking, right? And Oops, sorry. Were you guys not hearing any audio? Oh, my bad. So this is a shotgun mic right now, and the shotgun mic is just out of frame above my head. And again, you're going to hear more room noise, but it is really convenient because you don't have to worry so much about your positioning and you have to worry about them holding a mic at the proper place or being close to the microphone. So benefits to every kind of microphone. So really, if I were you and just starting out, 
my first recommendation would be getting the Smart Lav Plus. It is really versatile. You can plug it into your phone. You can plug it with the adapter into your your computer very easily for great audio. And um, yeah, it's just a really simple way and versatile way to get into much better audio. My second choice would be a USB mic like this. And you're listening to the USB mic right now. But again, you've got to be stationary. You've got to make sure that your microphone technique is pretty good to get quite close to the microphone. And my last choice, um, and because it's also the most expensive choice, is going to be the shotgun mic. And you will need some way to phantom power. Um, and the H5, another reason why I got the H5 is because if you wanted to do any video production, which I also do, then it's nice to have something that you can record audio separately and not just on your camera. So as a backup or also if, um, let's say, you needed to microphone multiple people and you don't have that many wireless microphones, you can always have them going into the Zoom recorder and record them separately and sync it afterwards. So really nice option to have. And the Zoom H5 has been excellent for me as far as a preamp and a recorder, nice and versatile. But let's go back to the smart lab. And that is the one that I do recommend for most people to start off with because it does sound great, it's easy to use, and you're, it's gonna grow with you as well. So in the future, if you need more distance, just buy the extension cable. If you need to plug it in as a recorder in the field, you can just plug it into your iPhone or Android slip it in somebody's pocket in airplane mode and it can record audio you can sync it up later as well so lots of different options i hope that's helped you guys listen and hear for yourself the differences between a lavalier a usb mic as well as a shotgun mic and so everything's got its strengths and um, yeah from there uh, you can find all the links in the description i'm going to be hoping to do more videos like this as well and i'm going to be doing more live streaming on youtube you can check me out on facebook every day i'm on there at not so ancient dave but uh, thanks for watching do subscribe if you like stuff like this and i shall see you guys in the next video god bless